In the history, seismic isolation has been used, maybe consciously or unconsciously, several times. For example, one example is a tomb in uh, Iran, today's Iran. It's a, uh, it's a tomb of uh, Kirosh, in per, uh, a Persian em emperor. When they designed this tomb, they, over the ground, put the stones, act like foundation, without any connections to the ground and without any connection between each other. So during an earthquake, these stones move uh, on top of each other, and uh, by friction, they, they damp the earthquake forces, and this tomb is still standing still after several hundreds of years. Another example might be the Greek temples. You, know? you can see Greek temples standing like that. They are very vulnerable structures. They are constructed on uh, stiff soil with a sand level on top. So during an earthquake, temple moves on the sand level, sand layer, and uh, they do not get harmed. Or they at least they will they get less damage than a conventional design. Another example from Istanbul, an obelisk, Theodosius stone, that was constructed, that was placed in uh, Istanbul Sultanahmet Square after Christ at fourth century. It is nearly 20 meters high, uh, but it's still there. After several earthquakes, it still stands there just by the help of four little bronze tube below the stone that moves during an earthquake that rocks, which is a similar seismic isolation principle during an earthquake, and it's still, still there. It's a very vulnerable structure, but it's still there, slender structure, but it's still there. And beginning from the 19th century, the people tried to make this a market uh, product. First known patent application was in 1870, a patent application for a building resting on two concave plates with some rollers inside. Then in 1897, again, two concave surfaces under a building with a single articulated block, which is very similar to the modern uh, friction pendulum devices. In 1906, again, a patent application we see. Then medical doctor in England thought that if we could put some slippery mineral below the building, a tall powder, it may help the building to slide on this slippery mineral. But until 1974, there was not a market product. In 1974, William Robinson, who invented the lead rubber bearings, uh, in New Zealand, and we are still using these lead rubber bearings in our buildings. Uh, I will talk more about lead rubber bear bearings, but lead rubber bearings are composed of rubber layers uh, to, to give the lateral flexibility to the bearing, the steel shims to give the vertical stiffness to the rub uh, rubber isolator, and the lead core inside just to provide additional damping to the to the bearing. Then, in 1985, Victor Zayas in USA uh, invented the first prototype of friction pendulum bearings, uh, sliding bearing, friction pendulum or curved surface sliders, let's say. There is a concave surface and a sliding puck inside, which during an earthquake moves uh, and by the help of friction, it dissipates energy. And the first applications of seismic isolation with real seismic isolators, but they were all rubber isolators actually, not lead rubber isolators, but rubber isolators. We first see in Japan, in Tokyo in 1921, uh, Imperial Hotel. It survived the big counter earthquake in 1923. This was the information that we could find uh, in the literature. It survived without, with minimum damage actually, while the other buildings around were getting high damages. Then another building in Europe, in former Yugoslavian Republic of Macedonia, the Pestolatsi School in 1969 was constructed over the rubber isolators. Then actually they put rubber blocks there as, uh, as isolators, but they did not put steel shims where I showed here. I mean, there are steel shims. So they did not put steel shims. So you can see that by the 
and still not acting on them in time, they started to make bulges around. So in time, maybe 20 years after uh, the construction, they removed those isolators and installed the lead rubber isolators instead. They tested also these isolators and compared the initial testing results with the uh, test results, let's say 20 years later, and the results were very similar. So yes, there are some effects of aging, but not that much. <laughs>